Folks, we are here in New York City for the opening of the Jackie Robinson Museum. This has been something uh, that his family and the foundation, they have been wanting to do for a number of years. Y'all remember, we were here for the groundbreaking. Uh, we covered that when I was on TV One. COVID hit. It got delayed. But uh, this week, they are opening the museum. It is a fantastic space. Tonight, uh, they have a sneak preview for their donors and board members and invited uh, guests. One of those folks, uh, is baseball aficionado, uh, Mr. New York himself, uh, Spike Lee. So he was, he was, he was in the reception. I said, Spike, I'm doing my show live. I said, you want to step back? He's like, he said, when? I was like, well, going live now. We can do it now. Let's go. So he up the top. What's up, man? What's up, baby? All good, Doc. It's always good to see you. Indeed, man. Good and, to and see congratulations. you. Congratulations. You're doing your thing, man. Man, I appreciate and, it. And like, you're putting your money behind it, too. So that's, that's, do your thing, man. Hey, man, it's going great. It's, so, so we were sitting here talking, and so Spike said, so he, he said, so you can be the ribbon, ribbon cut tomorrow. I'm like, yeah, we covered it live. Yeah, you and, here. And then we be then we be live uh, tomorrow night from the gala. The gala. We'll be live from the uh, block party on Wednesday. Woo. That's what happens when you own. You don't have to ask anybody for, for, for permission, which you know very well. Well, I know that. That is you someplace they tell you you can't bring your camera you go right over that. <laughs> well that well that's happened. Well, that little, little, that's little, happened. That, but the camera got in. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness for the cinematic on the iPhone. Woo! <laughs> I just want again, I know I sound like a broken record, but you're doing your thing. You've been doing it and continue to do it because we need you. Man, I appreciate There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it. And you spread the word, you know, you're not just putting stuff in your back pocket. You're like, boom, check this out. That's the only way. That's the only way. Well, that's the only way for you, but <laughs> I can't talk about well, well, you. Well, you know, hey, I can only speak for me. There you go. I only speak for me. And I appreciate you for doing man, that. Man, I appreciate it. I you, appreciate you, it. And also, I'm not done yet. Go ahead. You've been putting the work in for years. Just I know Johnny come <laughs> Soul train. Now you've been <laughs> You've been here. Yes, sir. You're gonna be here. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's it. Appreciate you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Of course we had your wife on well a week ago yeah. for a documentary. Uh so glad to see the uh, things that it's she's blowing up too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, of course, and I, I was last here in New York for, for your Kaepernick documentary. I yeah, appreciate you calling me, including me on that. You, so, you, so you were laying down the, the knowledge, wisdom, 
<laughs> some science and science to back that up. You know, you ask me a question, I'm going to answer it. They may not that's like what, the answer. That's what I, I, I need you in this. I need you in this. Well, that was it there. Man, let's talk about um, I'm a 42. this brother here. Mm -hmm. So I was talking to um, a couple of my guys before. So they have a statue out there of him in his football uniform. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Anthony, UCLA. he goes, who's that? I'm like, dude, Jack, Jack Robinson. I said, baseball was his weakest sport. He was a greater football player, track player, than he was baseball. Yeah. That's how bad this brother was. Bad brother. <laughs> <laughs> bad brother. And people, I mean, a lot of people, not a lot of people, we still don't fully understand. He, Jack, along with Branch Rickey, changed America. And people understand that Jackie was 53 years old when he died. Yep. I mean, if you see him at the, his hair. I'm is, 53. Well, you're good. But no, but to your point. Yeah, 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 yeah. His hair was white as snow. And those years where he made that deal yep. with Branch Rickey that he had to keep it in, no matter how, how many times they spiked him, no pun intended, through his head, yep. the, the insults, the death threats. And you have to, when you have to keep that in. Doc. That's it. But think about it. He sacrificed his life because he, he knew the first time <laughs> it was over. He knew the first time he retaliated. That have been it. And the thing, the thing that people don't understand, and, and I really wish TNT would reissue um, the movie. Andre Brower played him in the court martial of Jackie Robinson. Mm -hmm. I cannot find a thing on DVD. Maybe there's a VHS copy. Mm -hmm. What people don't understand, Jack Robinson didn't take no stuff off of people. This this was not a weak, meek brother. And that was that was before Rosa Parks. It was in Texas. Yeah. They they Plus. said, We're gonna court martial you. He said, Let's go to trial. And he he risked being getting a dishonorable discharge because he said, No, I'm not he said, I'm not sitting in the back of the bus. He said, not wearing his uniform. But and so you take that but, defiance man, principle. and and what he did in baseball to hold that in, because that was not his natural instinct. There's a, I, I read that Rachel said that when Jackie would come home, that blow a steam, he'd get a, a bucket of golf balls. They were white. <laughs> and just whack, 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 <laughs> whack, whack, whack. <laughs> the biggest thing he can get. But he sacrificed. He was 53. I'm yep. 65. 53. Di diabetes. You're 53. I'm 65. Yep. Diabetes racked his body. Um, all, all of that. I mean, that, I mean and, and that's the thing. And I tell people all the time, you know, when we talk about the Kaepernick documentary, um, I, I love when all these people were talking about how dare he kneel. And, I, and they, they would bring up black soldiers. I'm, oh, I said, y'all clearly didn't read Jackie's book. Mm -hmm. He said in his book, he said, I will not salute that flag and stand for that song yeah. because of what he had to endure. And this was what was amazing why his book was called Never Had It Made. He said, because if there is one black person who is not free, none of us are free. Yeah, he was a uh, saint. We could say that. Jackie's a saint. And so people in Brooklyn, the People's Republic of Brooklyn, we have so much... Love me. Jackie played for the Brooklyn Dodgers. <laughs> then you got Campanella, Don Newcomb, Joe Black, Jim Good. Well, see, I want to pick up on that because I've, I've, I've talked about this in many of my speeches. We, and we rightfully, we rightfully celebrate Jackie Robinson. Mm. But I keep trying to explain to people, it was only called the major leagues because white folks had the money. Right. The major league talent was in the Negro Leagues. So, my daughter's named after Sancho Page. Really? Yeah, her name is Sancho. Okay. I mean, that's where the talent was. But here's another thing, though, is that and there's, there's a lot of correlation between Joe Lewis. When Joe Lewis was fighting, black folks were around that radio. And the same thing with Jackie. Even if you weren't a Brooklyn Dodger fan, they would listen to the game and they would say, how did Jackie do? Right. Because we knew... The entire race, can you imagine that? Where the entire race is on your shoulders, and if you don't come through, 
that's going to put us back 10, 20 years. Right. Just that pressure alone could take years off your life. And for people who don't quite understand, Dr. King talked about this when they, people would question him about Sidney Portia dying care, and he would say, no, 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 no. We don't, I don't need them at the march because they are serving a purpose of what they're doing on the small screen and the big screen. But also, don't leave for Harry Belafonte. Right, right, right. But Belafonte. he was... Yeah, but, yeah. But, 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 you you didn't include Belafonte. But it was with the criticism, yeah, yeah. like, because they would say, well, we see Harry, we see Dick. Why are we seeing them? And he would go, no, 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 hold up. They are serving a purpose mm -hmm. in the roles that they're playing, but they also didn't realize the fundraisers they were having at their apartments for the but, movement. But also... And Jackie was a huge fundraiser for the movement. Listen, this though. You can't leave out Paul Newman... Uh, James Garner. James Garner. Um, what's Peter man? Lawford. What's the man who's the Peter singer? Lawford. Uh, Bennett. Tony Bennett. Harry Belafonte said. Marlon Brando. Yep. So it was Harry yep. Belafonte. And Sydney that was bringing in yep. the progressive white Hollywood. Right. Diane Carroll was holding fundraisers at her apartments in New York. Yeah. Jackie Robinson, again, if people you haven't read his book, what he the fundraising that he did for the NAACP. I mean, he traveled around the country and he didn't hold his tongue because he did not have a lot of good things to say about uh, uh, Roy Wilkins, who ran the NAACP. And, he, and, and again, this was a brother who was willing to criticize black folks, willing to criticize white folks. His whole deal was going after the liberation of black people. But I have to bring this up. He did, he did feel very apologetic for one person to criticize. Paul Robeson. Paul Robeson. The un, he testified before the Un-American Act. And that, uh, now, here's what's interesting. I had Della on my show, Della Who Runs Foundation, mm -hmm. and that came up. And, in fact, someone uh, is working on a documentary about that hearing. Mm -hmm. And what she said to me was, she said, if people go back and actually look at the testimony, he spent a small amount of time on Robeson. But, but even well, that... It wasn't small enough that he... he right. He, apolog he said yeah. that that's one he could take back. Yep. So it wasn't, couldn't yep. be that small. Yep. Yep. But that, for me... It is so... I mean, you know this. Booker T, Du Bois. We get to these things where... It's like, well, you had, you went through that. No, you know you went through it. Leave me out of this. No, no, you went through it, but y'all sat down. No, I tell you the story. You and Tyler. I called him up. I said, I'm gonna get on the plane. I said, I need to come down there. I'm gonna get on the plane. He said, Spike, come down. Went, gave me the tour of the mansion. <laughs> The first one, <laughs> not the new one. Yeah, not the new one. And later on, when he named one of the stages for him. Yep. But I saw that it was, it was, it was getting out of hand. It was like spikes from the north. And but I was right. born in Atlanta. I went to Morehouse. My father went to Morehouse. My grandpa went to Morehouse. My mother and grandmother went to Spelman. So I got southern roots, you know. But it, it, it was, it was. Great, that town. We squashed that. Right. It, it, we we we, to, we squashed it. No, he told me. Yeah, it was squashed. But see, that's why when I interviewed Maddie Rich. What'd you say? When I interviewed Maddie Rich. Yeah, yeah. And we was sitting there, and I was like, "Y'all hadn't talked." And he told me, I was like, "Now I was glad you answered." Mm -hmm. And I was, and I, and because I was just again, that's one of those things that yeah. my whole deal is. Hey, I know him. I know you. Yeah. And, you know, and his people hit me. He said, uh, he said, yeah, he said, he got all the information. They haven't connected yet. I said, but that's the thing. That's where two men, mm -hmm. hey. Let's, brothers. Two brothers. Let's sit down. Brother, brother. And chop this thing up. Chop it up. Chop it up. And chop so up. Th th that, th that, that's what's important. That's yeah. what's important. Yeah. When you, when you think about this um, museum and when people come through the, I think what's going to be so awesome they're going to realize this man was way more than a baseball player. Chocolate nuts. 
<laughs> See, for somebody watching, they're like, what the hell is Mike talking about nuts? It's a coffee company. Came out of New York, and uh, Jackie, he was thinking about, he knew he was not going to play baseball forever. And he was like a 28, 27, 28 year old rookie. So he was seeing beyond. Yep. He knew it was more than. Then he got what bank did he get involved in? In Harlem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Black Bank. Yeah, Black Bank. So he 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 was a visionary. I, I just visionary. that that's where that's where I, I I hope people when when we think about athletes that we look at them not just through the prism of when they play that they that that there are things that they do that go way beyond that. Uh, same thing whether we're talking about actors, whether we're talking about, you know, Sam Jackson isn't just an actor. Denzel isn't just an actor. I mean, there's mm -hmm. things that they are, mo they are, they are more than that. And where, it forces people where, to learn. Where is Sam Jackson go to college? <sighs> that house. <laughs> he went to Morehouse. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he went to Morehouse. All right, all right. <laughs> Come on, man. I got, I got <laughs> I know you got a rep. We're on a black thing right now, man. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we're in the Jackie, we're in the Jackie Robinson Museum. We're not a black thing right here. Right, but he went to UCLA. But I'm saying, <laughs> I'm saying. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Was, was Jackie friends with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.? Yeah, he was. Where did he go to school? Uh, with the Boston University. Undergrad. <laughs> <laughs> the house. See? For the black thing, baby. <laughs> he went to the house. He went to the house. Uh, he went to the house. And also, Marty and I, Martin Luther King III, were classmates. Okay. This is class 39. And my father was a freshman. Dr. King was a senior. Hmm. Did they, they cross paths when he was there? Yeah, he's, everybody knew who he was. Gotcha. I mean, he was... They knew. I'm still trying to figure out the professor who gave him a C in preaching. Hater. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure... Hater. I'm trying to figure, I'm trying to figure that one out. That one out. Who gave Dr. King a C in preaching? I don't know what they were thinking. Pull up a chair, take your seat at the Black Tape with me, Dr. Greg Carr, here on the Black Star Network. Every week, we'll take a deeper dive into the world we're living in. Join the conversation only on the Black Star Network. Now, let me tell you something. So, when I got my, um, of course, if y'all saw Do the Right Thing, of course, Spike was rocking the uh, Jackie Robinson jersey. And, and you make it perfectly clear to people, don't be walking around with no Jackie Robinson Dodgers jersey with his name on the back. Well. He didn't have his name on the back. I know. But people going to see right. this, people, people going people to see this movie who nothing about so it was helping people who did not know right. Jackie. Right. But I, I knew that, 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 I mean, I got a Jackie Robinson jersey, so right. I knew that. Right. The Before Robinson. too. Yeah, and in yeah. fact, the Houston Astros sent me, and it's, I actually did have several people, I saw the mayor of Houston, Sylvester Turner, mm -hmm. and he had a, a 42 with his name on the back. They sent me an Astros jersey. You know, obviously, yeah. uh, all, all the, Major League Baseball, all the 42s retired across all teams. And they sent me a 42 jersey, yeah. and they put my name on it, mm -hmm. but I won't wear it. 
Dang, my deal is, I you told him, frame I, though, right? I said, huh? You got a frame though, right? Yeah, but I, I got to hang it up. Yeah, no, you got yeah, a frame, yeah, right? But I, won't, but I won't wear it. So my deal is, I'm, I'm going to get me one, mm -hmm. but I don't want my name on it. It's his number. Cool. And that's the thing. That's the thing. Yeah. And so I, I would hope, but you know, and it, now, and, and look, being, being a hardcore Astros fan, Yankees fan, um, hardcore. Now I'm going to tell you all right now. If the Astros and the Yankees face each other in the playoffs, I'm telling you right now, we go go we go, we go, go to a game together. He gonna be decked in all his Yankee stuff, but I'm gonna have so much Astros blue and orange on. He gonna think I'm a Knicks fan. <laughs> <laughs> What's with this train that goes in the out? What is that? Oh, that actually is a that's a throwback to the Astrodome. When the Houston Astrodome, eighth one of the world, when it opened, whenever they would hit uh, a home run, uh, the scoreboard would light up and they had a train that was going. So that's, that's, that's a sort of a throwback to the Astrodome. The first time, this is a good story. 1968, the Astrodome. My father told my mother, my late mother, Spike up, stay up to watch the game. UCLA. Oh, University of Houston. 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 Louis Alcindor, Elvin Hayes. And Alcindor, he got poked earlier, so he had to play that game with one eye. And the, this is the Cougars, right? Yep. They destroyed the Bruins. But they met in the semifinals. <laughs> and brother Louis Alcindor, from Harlem, <laughs> uptown, they did a job on it. But that, at that time, that was like the biggest yeah. college. It wasn't. It's still regular season. It was the biggest college yeah. game ever. And I pleaded. I said, my mother said, you have to go to school tomorrow. And my father called my, my you said Jim, G E M, Jim. He's watching the game with me. <laughs> I was tired in the morning in school, <laughs> but I'm glad he let me. I remember that game, 68, 68, I was 11 years old. Um, so that had to be, was that a fall game? Was, was, like, was that, so if that was, if that was a regular season. The regular season. That had to be like September, October, November. No, they don't, college basketball doesn't start till after like Thanksgiving. Okay, which means that I think I was probably two weeks old. Mm. I was born November, November 14, 68. You were... So I was here when the game got played. <laughs> Man, let me see my phone. Let me see the actual date. Let me see the actual date of this game. It's over my phone. Let me see my... Let me see. I remember that game. Let me game. see when that game was actually played. Uh, let's see. And it had like... See the tens that game. That that thing was... 60,000 people. Well, that's what put in the mind of the NCAA uh, when they decided to go to uh, March Madness in um, stadiums. Yeah. They harken back to that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, don't UCLA get a bad seat, Houston. But you have to watch the no, Dumbo Trump. No, I wouldn't even concede yet. I was, the game was January 20th, 1968. Uh -huh. My mom and daddy probably had sex on Valentine's hey, Day. Hey, 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 no, hey, that's enough. No. <laughs> I was born November 14th. It's literally nine months. My brother born November 13th, 67. So both of us say we Valentine's Day babies. <laughs> <laughs> And his son was born November 10th. There you go. No, 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 uh, no Chris, November 12th. So I'm like, yeah, y'all were, were having a little fun Valentine's Day, too. <laughs> <laughs> you, always wanted to, you always wanted to do a Jackie Robinson movie. I'll tell you the story. Uh, first of all, deep respect our brother Chadwick. So yes, this, 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 this is... Great brother. This is... Nothing to do with him because yep. I was. Yep. He probably he was probably still at Howard. Yep. And my version of Jackie Robinson, I wanted to tell a life story. I did not just want to concentrate on 1947 because mm -hmm. I don't think I thought that. I still think that that he was more. That was more than. Yeah. He had a life before 47. Yeah. He lived a life after 47. Yeah. I really wanted to show the scope and the depth of the man. And the same reason why Malcolm X 
Right. You know, and that's why I got, you know, conflict with the studio. Malcolm, he was evolving. Yep. And you need to show those different phases of his life. Yeah. You can't do that in two hours. Right. And the people are dealing with, with the Jackie Robinson, you know, they don't want to do it. So it didn't happen. Would you still do it today? Or is it, or is it time gone past? I don't think it's past. Also, I wanted Denzel to play Jackie. But he, Jack, Denzel said he was too old at the time. Well, see, now he would have to play the older, the older Jackie. <laughs> yeah. So you had to find a younger... His cat. son! You had to... John David. You know, he played football at Morehouse. I know. And that would, the, and that would be interesting. Yeah. John David as the... I do want to, I mean... I want you, I want both of them. <laughs> but they were in the film together already. Malcolm X. John David is one of those kids at the end that says, is in the classroom. Right. My name is Malcolm X. Really? That was his debut. Wow. Did not know that. Very few people know that. Did not know I that. I would love to do something with Denzel and his son, John David. Mm. Have you talked about it? No. <laughs> do, do I John talk? David knows about it, but not D. Do I need to call Paletta? <laughs> no. See, that, 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 that's how I get to this hill. See, that's, that's the only way. See, that, that, that's, why I, that's why I always speak to the wives. I speak to the, or the women. I speak to the husband. Because like Viola, I, just, I, I, I call Julius. Mm -hmm. See? I, 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 other cats just like. And how, and how do you get in touch with Samuel Jackson? Oh, I hit Sam. But I met his wife first. Matter of yeah. fact, I met his wife and Pauletta first. And they were like, oh, my God, bro, we love you. And I was like, well, I'm sure appreciate that. <laughs> And so that, so that, so we got the end. That's right. You never, cause see, it's like the Fred Gray interview. I call Fred. I call. I love the message. And his wife, I heard the message. She said, "He, he's. A, I get all these interviews." She said, "No, oh, you doing that one?" Mm. She says, "You gonna do that interview, Roland Martin?" Mm. And when I went down to to um, Alabama to do it, uh, his wife and uh, the daughter was there. Watch the interview. I gave him a shout out. I was like, y'all made that happen. She's like, mm-hmm, he doing his interview. <laughs> See? So, yeah, I, that, I always, I don't even know the wives. Mm -hmm. I don't even know the wives or, or, or the husband. I always talk to them. You, um, you were just talking about, um, when you mentioned uh, uh, Malcolm X. Yeah. And then I thought about, uh, you told me, with Harry Belafonte, when he told you, Man, why you keep calling Ossie and putting him in movies? You won't never call me. He you, said, he said, he said, Ossie can see one out. <laughs> and then we made the call for Black Lansman. He, woo! How, how old is he? 95. Turned 95 this year. We got to give a love shout out to Rachel. Yeah, she turned 100 a last week. Just had a birthday. 100 last week. Looking sprightly out there. Just saw they. Just they, saw her. Just saw her, absolutely. The queen. Rachel, one hunt. My grandma lived to be 100 years old. Wow. She put me through Morehouse and Spelman. I mean, so she put me through. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Morehouse and NYU. No, no, he's, no, no. <laughs> he's spoke right. <laughs> Are you trying to say that's a Freudian slip? He, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Probably spend more time at Spelman than at Morehouse, uh-huh. <laughs> No, that's not true. <laughs> There's a line. What kind of TV is this? You can say it's my show. Like, uh, it's called Roland Martin Unfiltered. Oh, 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 I want to know what you're It's called Roland Martin Unfiltered. Okay. There's a line <laughs> in school days where Jean Carl Esposito, who plays Big Bro Mighty, and I play the character Half Pine, he says, Half Pine, you ain't seen no paws! <laughs> <laughs> that was me. So, so don't that, was, twist that was your part. That was me. <laughs> no part. <laughs> so that's when that's when you were just Spike Lee. You weren't Spike. Well, my mother gave me that nickname. Really? Yeah. What's your actual name? Shelton Jackson Lee. Shelton Jackson Lee. Yes. But your mama called you Spike. Spike. Where'd it come from? Why? She said I was a tough baby. 
<laughs> she said, you are spiking my wound. <laughs> but uh, those are really some of the best four years of my life. I had your trials and tribulations. But my mother said, I'm giving more house, my baby, and I'm gonna get back a Morehouse man. Send the baby, came back, came back a man. Yes. And you've been running ever since. Well, I've been blessed, but it's a lot of hard work. Oh yeah. But uh, just blessed and uh, gotta keep going. Gotta keep it going. You know, that's what we do. You know, the thing that... I'm not getting in trouble for that thing, right? No, uh, no, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Well, the crew, the crew, they wanted to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> was that funny? Boy, you, you, those, everybody who saw School Days, we all know it's funny. We all know it's funny. We all know it's funny. <laughs> absolutely. Oh, first of all, I see the night. Nice, oh, okay, let me explain something, y'all. So I sit down for the interview uh, for the cabinet, and the first thing is probably goes... Well, your Jordans. I said, man, I ain't never owned no Jordans. He's like, oh, I got to see you some Jordans. I was like, look. What I got you? Ten and a half. All right. I said, I got sent these shoes, and I win. I said, the Texas and the football team gave me some, uh, they had Adidas. They gave them to me. I win. Um, Give I, me your address. I, I said, a black, uh, I'll send it to you. I, we, had, we had some black-owned athletic shoe companies on the show. They sent it to me. I win. I was like, hey, Mike ain't sent me none. <laughs> I said, I wear the shoes for nah, free. No, don't, don't take that. Put that on me. Don't put that on money. No, 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 no. I know. Oh. No, because when you asked me that, oh, yeah. I was like, hey, Mike ain't sent me no shoes. I said, Mike ain't sent me no shoes. <laughs> but I do. I did win a pair of the initial Air Jordan golf shoes yeah. years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, did, I do have the Air Jordan golf shoes. Mm -hmm. Golf shoes. Have you ever had Mike on your show? I have not. Would love to do it. You reach out to him? I I last saw him at the F1 race in Miami. Yeah. Uh, we, we've never, never exchanged them. Now, he, now, he knows who I am. Yeah, He's yeah. spoken everything. Mm -hmm. But I would, I would love to sit down and have a conversation with him. Would love to. Love to. Now, I know Fred Whitfield yeah. who's on his team. Now, how's your golf game? Well, I played yesterday, and my man went has his original T Golf Classic. Yeah. Uh, so we had a team. We shot one under. Uh, but uh, handicap 6.5. Can you hang money on the golf? Mike, Mike is probably better than me, but he played way more than me. Plays every day. That's my point. That's <laughs> on, my his own, on his own golf wait, course. Wait a minute. Him, <laughs> him, him, and uh, Ahmad. him and Ahmad. Yeah. Him and Ahmad. Uh, Ahmad did tell Ahmad we played uh, in the Jeffrey Osborne Golf Classic, and Ahmad was like, he said, "Ro, he said, if you play golf a little bit more, he said, 
you gonna be you be dangerous. He said, "Were well, you swinging?" He said, "I said, Amon, I got to work. You don't got the time." I said, "Amon, I said you seventy two and retired, Amon." I said, "I, I, I said, I, I raised like." He said, like, "Yeah, you're right." I said, "You," I said, "Come on, you chilling every day." You better, you, you better, Barkley. I don't know. <laughs> I guess that's a yes. <laughs> Your swing is better than that, though, right? Ladies and gentlemen, what does that face say? That face says, I'm about to cuss Mike Leah. Ah! That's that face. Man, please. Barkley don't want no part. No parts, huh? He don't want no parts of me. I was texting Charles the other day, but Charles don't want no part of me. Mm -mm. He don't want no. Trust me. You see my swing, you like, yeah, that ain't Charles swing. Matt, let me go. Who, let me see. Who is this here? Okay, that's my brother right there. Let, let me. We played golf the other day. Man, let me. You ever play golf in Mars Vineyard? Uh, yeah. I ain't. Uh, what? Uh, what? Golf course. Uh, I played. Farm Neck. I played Farm Neck. I played the what's that, the new one all the rich folks built. You didn't uh, see my I, house. I, I played. I saw your house. Yeah. I well, saw your crib. And what? 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 You see a flag? I saw. I saw all that. <laughs> what flag did you see? I saw what your forty acres in the middle. No, no, your, no your, your your embassy of Brooklyn. No. What flag is it? It's the first of all. I ain't been there in a while. The end interlocks with the Y. Oh, see, so ain't been there in a while. <laughs> I ain't been there in a while. No, it's been a long time since I've been there. Because everybody keep telling me, they're like, uh, man, why don't you come to Martha's I said, first of all, it's too hard to get to Martha's Vineyard. That's first. Two, I ain't trying to see nobody I know. Like, if, I, if I'm on vacation, I don't want to see nobody I know. Well, you definitely want to go to Martha's Vineyard in August. No. <laughs> I don't want to go to no fundraisers. I don't want to, don't, don't ask me about no money. I ain't gonna try to do none of that. So yeah, they, they, it's, so it's where do you go? When, okay. Hey, Doc. So again, this just so you know, Charles Barkley wishes he had this golf swing. Oh, you left handed, huh? Barkley wishes he had this golf swing. Good swing. He, he ain't got that. He ain't got that. It's windy too, huh? Oh yeah. Where was that? That was uh, Lansdowne in Virginia. Virginia. Yeah, but I, I, you know, I'm a golf to ball. I'm, I'm How long you been golfing? Took us my PE, Texas A&M, since 1987. One of the best decisions ever made. Needed four credit hours of PE. You in class, all the other players. The brother's like, man, look, I'm going to take basketball, give me an easy grade. I'm like, hell, I'm not playing basketball. So my brother was here before me. He took golf. I said, I'm going to take golf, too. I, one of the best decisions ever. That's how connected with Sam. Yeah. Most cats I, I've connected with, it, it was through golf. It was through golf. Sam's good golf, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sam, Sam, Sam golf as well. Mm -hmm. When he stopped doing his own stuff, he injured himself. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a chance to uh, play around together uh, at his club in L.A. So uh, who, else, who else is good golf? Uh, let's see here. Man, so Ray good. Allen's so good. Oh, Ray Allen can play. Have not played Ray Allen. Uh, Steph and I text. Yeah, he, uh, he, 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 he can golf his ball. Uh -huh. Steph can golf his ball. Um, How's Obama? But I'll play. How's Obama's You know, hold up. So here's the deal. I ain't never played with Obama. For eight years, he kept saying, Roland gonna go out and play. And I'm like, bruh, eight years. You don't want to go to Mars Vineyard. I, no, he was playing at Andrews Air Force Base. I was like, bruh, what's up? He called everybody else, and he left-handed. I'm like, what's the deal? What's the deal, B.O.? What'd you say about him? Huh? Well, you know. <laughs> You forgot about that. No, I ain't forget. I ain't forget. <laughs> Why you say what's up then? I ain't forget. You know what's no, up. No, no, you know what's up. No, no, no. But that's also but that's also the role I played to get him get elected. See here's see here's here's what I tell everybody. This is this is my this is literally been my journalistic philosophy. This is a game plan. If you do good, mm -hmm. I'll talk about you. Mm -hmm. If you do bad, I'll talk about you. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I'm gonna talk about you. My role is not to be your cheerleader. Mm -hmm. My role is to speak truth for black people. And where I critiqued him, I went hard. And that's the deal. And yeah. so you ever hear from him after that? I mean we when he was when he was in when he was in the White House, you know, they would they, they would invite me, you know, when he would do the anchor meeting and stuff like that. And I ain't never get invited to the birthday party and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But that's fine. Cause see my, my whole deal is Do you get the invite I, to the, the thing in Mona's Vineyard? Oh no, oh no, no, hell no. Why not? I ain't get none of that. Come on now. I ain't get none of that. <laughs> I ain't get none of that. No, and I, and I really, I, and I do. I really think it's because 
I, I am going to do what I do. And so here's the piece. If that means I don't get invited and stuff like that, I'm good. My, the role that I the role that I play as a journalist and speaking truth for black America, it has to be said. Mm -hmm. And so that means that you're not going to kick it with some folks. And I'm good with that. I'm cool. I mean, other people, they're like, oh, my God. And I bother. I'm like, no. I'm like, nobody has to invite me to anything. Nobody has to be, you know, if it's like, oh, so-and-so had, uh, uh, had a surprise birthday party. Rolling, you didn't go? I was like, yeah. I said, I don't. I said, I got a great life. I'm good. Mm -hmm. But when I'm, but, 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 but when that light come on and we go live, Sometimes I got to hit you and everything ain't going to be all peaches and cream. Mm -hmm. And so I hit him a few times. The left and the right. Left, right. <laughs> With a left coming back. But we talking Mike Tyson here. Too? But it, I mean, not Mike, I mean, not, not Mike Tyson. Riddick Bo. I mean, Riddick Bo. More like Larry Holmes. <laughs> you know, Larry had a great jab. <laughs> so, you know, but, the, but, the, but that was the deal. It, it, it. You know, that was a piece. It, 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 things need to be said, and and I still stand on it. I mean, my, my biggest deal is I feel strongly he should have appointed a black woman to the Supreme Court when he picked Mary Garland. And I was like, and I said, and I went hard on that. And I'm like, sorry. And so people are like, yo, man, why'd you go so hard? And I mean, look, that's it. I mean, my, my deal is when you talk about legacy, we talk about legacy. I mean, look, you know, it, it ain't like you being, you know, Mr. Chill. I ain't never gave your opinion on stuff. You know, you got crossed off a whole bunch of lists. Don't even act like, don't even act like this is a foreign conversation. Don't even act like this is a foreign conversation. You right, you right, you right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, you know I'm right. Just keep stepping though, right? That's it. Keep That's stepping. That's it. And it, when, you know, when, you, when you know that you're walking in truth, when you know it's not personal, mm -hmm. it's not petty, mm -hmm. it's not envy, it's not jealousy, and you speaking truth, and some folks, they disagree. We cool. We can disagree. I'm good with that. Yeah. But I'm a swing. Mike Always. The defenses? Always. Aaron Judge? No. <laughs> no. You fell into that one. No, right? I didn't. Who's ja leading ja who's leading Major League's no, whole run? No, I didn't. Josh Gibson. Well but I'm a swing like Altuve. You ain't gonna see it coming. <laughs> yeah. When you got them things. I'm gonna see it like. Yeah, we got the thing over here. Right, see, with the, with the I, buzz. Yeah, the, I, I, the, why do why, why you stop the guy trying to tear his yeah, jersey off? See, I don't know why Spike going there, because, you know. You brought it up! We can talk you, about, about y'all letter. What letter? Oh, the, the letter Major League Baseball sent y'all. That y'all went to court to keep uh, from going public. They became public. I never heard about this. Okay, shall we go to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> shall, we, shall, we, shall we go to Google to discuss? We're going to commercial. <laughs> oh, we're going to commercial. Spike got to get back to the reception now. Ladies, see? ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it's time for a break. <laughs> <laughs> With that, maybe I always get to see Low, you, man. Hug, I hug, appreciate hug. it, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate thank it. You, thank it. You. Folks, Black Star Network is here. Hold no punches. A real uh, revolutionary right now. <laughs> Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. I thank you for being the voice of Black America, Rollins. I love y'all. All momentum we have now. We have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig?